Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today I have a synthesis that has been proposed by one of my subscribers. So, when we are looking at this synthesis, we see that we are starting with naphthalene, a molecule on the left, and we are going to be putting a couple of substituents onto our naphthalene. One substituent over here is going to be a methoxy group, which is an ether, so probably we are going to be utilizing some sort of a Williamson ether synthesis-like strategy to put that on, and in order to put the oxygen onto the aromatic ring, we probably are going to be using some sort of a diazonium strategy. So that means that that part of our synthesis is going to take quite a few steps with varying reactions. But what's more interesting is the bottom part of this product. We have this deuterium over here, and deuterium essentially is a heavy hydrogen. It's a heavy isotope of a hydrogen where I have an extra neutron, so if I have a hydrogen with an atomic weight 2, that is what we are going to abbreviate as deuterium. Of course, we can use just the hydrogen 2 uh, abbreviation like we would normally have for any kind of isotope, but why do that if we can use deuterium? And besides, deuterium is a very common label, so we are definitely going to be using that in organic chemistry quite often. Now, there are not that many ways how we can put deuterium into our molecule. The common method is going to be some sort of a deuterium exchange via the acid-base reaction, but this position in our molecule is not not acidic at all, so we need to come up with a different strategy. And one of the common strategies is to put deuterium via the Grignard quench, which is a synthetic strategy where we are going to be making a Grignard reagent or a similar organolithium compound, for instance, and then we are going to work it up immediately with deuterated water, and then we are going to do an acid-base chemistry that will essentially replace MgBr or lithium with the corresponding deuterium. And since the Grignard reagent agent does not tolerate any strongly acidic conditions or anything that can be even a little bit acidic like an alcohol or a phenol, for instance, we'll need to make sure that we put our methoxy group first and then we are going to incorporate the Grignard reagent into our scheme and finish up this synthesis. Additionally, it's important to remember that when it comes to the aromatic chemistry, we are always going to be thinking about the directing effects of our groups that we already have on the ring. Deuterium well, chemically speaking, deuterium is hydrogen, which means that that is not a director whatsoever. However, the methoxy group, well, that one is an order director. So once we have our methoxy group on our ring, it will be significantly easier to put anything into this position where we want it to be. Now, with all of that in mind, let's start working on our synthesis. And since I am planning to use the diazonium salts in my synthesis, I need to incorporate the nitrogen into my molecule somehow. The easiest way to do so will be via the nitration reaction. So we are going to start with a simple nitration of our naphthalene, which is going to put the nitro group into the position where we want it to be. When it comes to the electrophilic aromatic substitution of naphthalene, we have two positions here. We have the alpha position over here and beta position like that. When it comes to the naphthalene, it will predominantly be introducing the electrophile into the alpha position due to the resonance stabilization of the uh, carbocationic intermediate that we are going to have. So if you want to double check that for yourself, make sure you draw the entire mechanism paying extra attention to the resonance forms that we are going to have for our carbocation. So now, when we have our nitro group, we need to reduce it to amino group in order to perform the diazotation, and the reduction here can be done by something like iron uh, in hydrochloric acid, or you can use tin chloride in hydrochloric acid, or there is a million of other synthetic procedures that you could use here, it doesn't really matter which one you choose, the end result got to be the amine. We also got to remember that amines are basic, so we got to neutralize our reaction mixture, so we are going to have a basic workup on this case. But once we have our aromatic amine here, we can now proceed with our diazonium salt formation, and that one is going to be done with sodium nitrite in the presence of acid. Typically, we are going to be using HCl, hydrochloric acid, however, you can see versions with sulfuric acid as well. And this reaction is typically done at zero degrees, as the diazonium salt is not particularly stable, and it will decompose if you are doing that at a higher or room temperature. This reaction is going to give us our diazonium 
selenium salt that we were looking for. And now we can do a replacement reaction, a substitution if you want, uh, which is going to replace our N2 with the OH group. Collectively, we call all of those reactions as the Zandmeyer reaction. However, that's not necessarily a classic Zandmeyer reaction, but as I said, we still tend to call them all collectively a Zandmeyer reaction. So what we're going to do here, we're going to treat our molecule with sodium hydroxide in the presence of copper 1 oxide, which is a common Zandmeyer catalyst, which is going to give us one naphthol, which is our important intermediate on the way to our ether. And to get our ether, we are going to use the Williamson ether synthesis strategy here by first treating our molecule with a base. In this case, we don't need a strong base, so something like sodium hydroxide will work just fine. And then we are going to put the methyl group on it by treating the intermediate that we are going to get after deprotonation with methyl iodide. So that, after quite a few steps, going to give us our ether. And now we are going to start working on placing that deuterium in the para position to OCH3. And in order to do that, I've mentioned that we are going to be using the Grignard reaction. So in order to make a Grignard reagent, I need to put a halogen into the para position, which is very easy to do here via a simple electrophilic aromatic substitution, simple halogenation reaction. So we can do something like a reaction with Br2 in the presence of aluminum bromide as our catalyst, making a corresponding bromide. Since OCH3 that we have here, as I've mentioned before, is an orta para director, the major product here is going to be the para product, so it is exactly what we are looking for to get in our reaction. And finally, I'm going to make my greener reagent and treat that with D2O, deuterated water, to get my final product. So while this synthesis has quite a few steps, probably the trickiest part here was to figure out how to put deuterium into our molecule. Normally, we don't really talk much about the uh, reactions that incorporate deuterium into organic molecules, so that is not something that normally we would see on the exam or homework. However, some instructors are creative. They like to do that type of chemistry because at the end of the day, this is something that most textbooks do kind of talk about. So when it comes to incorporating deuterium into your molecules, remember, we're typically going to do it either via the acid-base reaction where the uh, acidic protons can be easily replaced with deuterium in either acidic or basic conditions depending on the nature of the molecule, or another fairly common way that we are going to see, that is going to be the greener reaction like what we did here. So what do you think about this synthesis? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, you can tell me that by hitting the like button and leaving me a comment below. Your likes and comments really help in promoting this video so more students can see that and our community grows. Subscribe to the channel for more organic chemistry updates and tutorials, watch this video next and I will see you tomorrow.